Today we're going to take a look at Angular 2 routing and how to host a project on a SharePoint document library. Here we're looking at the Angular CLI and here we have a SharePoint online team site. One of the reasons you might want to put your Angular 2 project in SharePoint is to get access to all the APIs. You have user profile, search, workflow, forms, SharePoint list for storage, and all of what Office 365 offers. Those APIs are fantastic to connect to, and Angular 2 can do all of that, but we need a way to host our project that's compatible with SharePoint's URL. I like to put my JavaScript work inside assets, and when we do that, we want to maintain this URL as we're clicking to navigate from one route to the next. In Angular CLI, we have documentation about how to use the project. Here you see npm install-g at Angular CLI, and then ng-new will instantiate a new project. If we go read about the ng-new command, it has an option for dash dash routing. So let's go open a command window and do ng-new sproute dash dash routing. That will create our new project with the route modules. Here in the list of files, you can see app-routing module is an extra one that's not normally there, and it's because we added dash dash routing in our command. Excellent. So with our project successfully created, the next thing we're going to do is ng-g. This is the generator. And if we come up and read the documentation, there's a few different things you can generate. We're going to work on generating a component. So ng space g space c route 1. I actually ran that command in the wrong folder. We need to change directories down to sp route and run the command within our Angular project. We repeat it again for our route 2 and one more time for route 3. So here we can see package.json, Angular CLI JSON. We know we're in the right folder. Let's do code dot to launch Visual Studio Code and inspect everything a little further. Here you can see we have our index.html, we have an app folder, and our app component is our primary file. Let's go over to the command line and type ng-serve. This will launch a localhost website at localhost 4200 and show us our project content. So if I copy that URL, switch back over to our browser, we can now see SP route running on localhost 4200. Back over in our project, if I were to trim the HTML, get rid of that bulleted list, maybe change the title to only the variable title. Excellent. Up here we can also change the TypeScript to maybe give it a better name. SharePoint Route Demo. There we go. That looks excellent. So with our demo running, let's go over to our view and we're going to add a couple of hyperlinks. A colon link tab. We'll go ahead and get us started. We're going to do route 1, 2, and 3 and we're going to all give them the hash symbol for the URL. This would simulate what a navigation bar looks like. Although for a real project, I would suggest Bootstrap for doing this. We're going to add one more for home, and that'll be just the hash symbol with nothing past it. Go ahead and save that. And here we're looking at our demo with route 1, 2, and 3. Clicking the links, we can see that that's added to the URL in the bar. Excellent. Making good progress. The app routing module is where we're going to do the mapping of a URL string to a component name. In order for that to all work, we need to import our components. So here we're going to go to the route1 folder and bring in route1component.ts, the TypeScript file, and in the import expression we're going to have route1component. We can copy that file and make a route2 and also a route3. We'll just adjust the folder path as well as the endpoint file name. Now we're importing the three components that we are going to need to do our mapping. On line 8 we have constant route for the mapping. Let's go ahead and expand that array and we're going to need to add three objects in here and they, these objects will represent our route map. In the first object we want to provide a path string. This is the name of the URL stem that will navigate us to that particular route. And we also provide a component. So here we're going to provide route 1 component which matches our import on line 4. So with that complete, we can go ahead and clone and make a Route 2 as well as a Route 3. Let's go ahead and update the names here. 
looks good. Right click, format document. Excellent work. Now down here on line 24, we're importing that route map variable, the array. There's a second parameter you can do when this bootstraps to provide configuration extra options. We're going to make an empty object and type the word use. There's a specific variable in here called use hash is true, and it will enable the location strategy URL instead of the history API. We want to go ahead and set use hash to true. And also in our index.html file, we're going to see base href slash. That's intended for the project to run on the root of a website. That is not the case when we're working in SharePoint. We're going to be in a subfolder of a subsite many levels down. We do not want to navigate all the way back up to the root of the DNS name. With those saved, let's go look at our project. And we can navigate to route 1, 2, 3, as well as home and see that everything is working as expected with our navigation links, the text displayed, and the URL at the top that makes it all happen. Beautiful. With that verified, we'll keep our localhost 4200 running with ng-serve. We'll make a new command prompt, <clears throat> navigate to sp-route, and type ng-build. ng-build will bundle all the artifacts for deployment, and it's going to create a new folder in our project. Okay, ng build successfully completed, and if we look at the folder structure, we're going to see a new folder called dist. If we go ahead and flip over to site assets, we're going to make a new empty folder, sp route, that will host all of our Angular artifacts. We navigate into that folder, we have to rename index.html to index.aspx. SharePoint handles ASPX files better. If it were named HTML, it would merely prompt for download. We're looking for it to render in line. For that, we want ASPX. Good, all the files uploaded. So let's make a new tab, and it's going to be site assets, SP route, index ASPX, and that will load the home page of our project. Here we can click route 1, 2, 3, and we can see the message that verifies the routing is working. And more importantly, over here in red, it's maintaining that full URL with all of the slashes and all of the structure to site, child site, document library, folder, whatever it is that we had. As a recap, what we did when we instantiated our project was use dash dash routing. That gave us a file called app routing module. We generated three components and made import statements for them. We populated the routes array with a path component, path component pairing for the string name to the component variable. On the import statement, we provide that variable, that array, but we also provide use hash true so that it uses the location strategy based on URL. Up top in the index.html, we commented out the base href. Back over in our command line, we did ng build to bundle the project for delivery that created a distribution folder, DIST, and these are the artifacts we deliver to our customer. Back in SharePoint, on the site assets document library, we made a folder called SP route. We uploaded all of that content by renaming the index to .aspx, and when we navigate to index ASPX, we can see our project load, we can see the routes, we can click them, and all the navigation works fine. This is a model that is sustainable. It will provide all of the SharePoint API functionality you need, and it's very simple and easy to repeat. Thanks for watching.